Good afternoon, everybody. This is Tim Gillette, and we're back with another episode of the Tim Gillette Show. Hey, guys, I've been doing this show for almost, I was calculating it just the other day, been doing a show, a podcast of some sort, interviewing people for nine years. This month is nine years I've been doing this, and uh, today's guest is actually someone who's been on all versions of my podcast. All different from the very first one I was on Blog Talk Radio, she was on. When I was with the studio, she was on. When I was doing them on Blab, she was on. And then even this version here where we've been on, she was on last year and she's coming back again today. Sandra D. Robinson is a, I got to say, she's a personal friend of mine, all right? Her and her husband, Alan, are just two people who I, I consider to be very close. Uh, we don't do anything in either one's town without calling each other and say, oh, by the way, I'm in your town, all right? Uh, sometimes we do, but most of the time we don't because we're friends all right. But more importantly is she's someone who's actually shown me some very, very great leadership skills in life. All right. And I'm sure she'll be talking about that as that's what she's now doing to help people as well as her business probably changed in the, during the pandemic. So we're going to find out how hers changed and what she did to stand out as a leader. You ready? Let's bring her up. You on camera now, girl. Hello. Happy <laughs> anniversary, Tim. Nine years. Like nine years I've been doing this. Well, you, I heard you mention, was it, what was the Blab? blab? What, blog what was blog the, Talk Radio, but we did Blab. Do you remember when I got on Blab? Yes. That was Until you I, mentioned that, I totally forgot about it. I was, because I, I basically left the radio station, which was that one with uh, Dave Pratt in uh, Arizona. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to do this on Blab for now on. And I didn't have a system down quite with them. It was like, I have now, I have a system down to do it and everything. But I'm like, I did blab until it went down. And I'm like, okay. And then I quit for a while and came back. Yeah. So anyway, nine years. Nine years. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hey, Robert, our, our one of our great famous listeners, Robert's here. Hello, Robert. Great to see you today. Hello. So, hello, hello anyway. Robert. So, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, down on the ranch. Uh, how's things going down on the ranch today? All is good. We have, we've launched into our equine retreat season here. So I must say that in to get prepared for that, all of our gardens look great. The horses are all clean. The barn has been cleaned out and it has pretty lights all over it. So it's like fairy tale land here right now. <laughs> I should it's not usually visit. like that. Yes, yeah, you should. I, should. I should come and visit. <laughs> We're trying to get people to visit as much as possible because come, come winter, it's not going to look like this anymore. So yes. Come. Well, no, what's funny is, guys, just so you know, is she actually two weeks ago, I was busy doing something, but I had a weekend kind of off. And she's like, you should come down. And I'm like, I'd like to, but like I have other things and like I could stop by for a day. And she's like, yes, yes, come. Yeah. And I did. Yeah. <laughs> we, we got a room for you. We have wine, a winery right around the corner that I know that you like. So that I'm, Yeah, that, I, that I'm a member at. Yes. <laughs> I'm a member. Wait, I'm a member at that winery because of you. <laughs> yes, I know it's my fault. <laughs> uh, I took you there, gave you a good bottle of wine, and the next thing you know, you're signing up. Which what you pick up your wine like every six months. It, so basically, you you need a truck to come down and get your wine by the time you actually get here. Well, yeah. and there, they, wait a minute. The guy at the winery, not not the owner, but the guy who usually runs during the week. When I pull yeah. up, he knows to go get two cases. He's because he knows I'm going to take my wine. And buy another two cases to go home. See, yeah, it's all good. And I never, I never go down there without staying to do a tasting. Um, to me, I, that's part of the experience is doing a tasting with there with them. So, yeah. well, it is, and you get to hear that's any tasting. You get to hear the stories. You know, even when we were traveling through some of the states on our our trips this summer, you know, which are not known for wine, um, for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> but it was still hey, not everybody's California, you know. No, but like wines made of pear and peaches, they're just not my thing, you know. Um, how about, but how I, about, how about uh, chili in your wine? Chili? What do you There's mean? There's a winery. There is a wineries in New Mexico that has chili, hatch chilies in their wine. Oh, it is good. I have like six yeah, bottles seems, of it here. It is do you good. Really? Yes. It seems kind of interesting. Well, and my friends that own Iron Wolf Distillery up here, they put. They have a butterscotch whiskey and they actually put in with the butterscotch flavor that they, that they create, they have, um, local peppers. Mm -hmm. So they have chili peppers in with the, 
it's called hot scotch. So it's got this hotness once you swallow it, which is the peppers coming back and kicking you like, who invents these flavors? I mean, it's yummy, but alcoholics I, who have nothing better to do than sit and create more alcohol. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Are they getting paid for not it? That I, not <laughs> that I know any alcoholics like that. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> not I'm, starting, quite. I'm starting a new alcohol podcast. Did you know that? I don't think you, did you tell me that? No, I'm yes, starting with it. You with said a, cooking. It was going to be cooking. No, not cooking. It's going to be alcohol and tasting, food pairing tastings to go with oh. the alcohol. Okay. Uh, with a, a lady from uh, Oregon and I both mm -hmm. like tastings. So we decided we're going to create a podcast with it. Oh, okay. So I remember November, the food yeah, pairing. like November like eighth or something like that or something. Well, that's perfect. Just in time for uh, everybody to gear up into the holiday season yeah, with you. Yeah. So that's why not? It's going to be the first time I'm doing a podcast that isn't something related to business. Why not? Why? Yeah, why not? not? Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I do appreciate how you just kind of led right into the promo of your new of your new show. That was excellent, sir. <laughs> for for all of my all of my community that's watching, flawless. Did you see how it just blends that right in as if it wasn't planned at all? <laughs> Wait a minute, we were supposed to plan something for this show. <laughs> no, that was actually part of what I said. Is you have a very unique style. No one really knows where this is going to go. So here we are. No, nobody knows where this is going to go. Uh, but then again, that is usually us. We usually talk, but, you know, but when we're on screen for, for the truth is, is we usually kind of stick to somewhat business. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? But when we're hanging out in person, we never talk. We talk things that we will not talk on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's a wine related podcast, you never know what's going to happen with that. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so you're getting the house ready now for, for you're having retreats, the equine retreats yes. now. Yeah. Are you doing them? during the pandemic or did they just they kick back up after the pandemic yeah it was interesting we we started these i think i told you the the very um tender beginnings of all of this training was i got the download to do this program primarily for women called charismatic cowgirl and it was about leadership and mindfulness kind of a combination of the two we've now separated them mm -hmm. but um I was prompted to do this, prompted meaning like downloaded. And every time I try not to do it, things just kept pushing me in that direction. So my first workshops that I launched, I called them wine and equine appropriate to our conversation. That's where I'm bringing it up. I called it wine and equine. I invited mostly people that were my friends. So I figured if I promised them alcohol at the end of it, that they would treat me nicely and tell me if things were wrong and not be too mean to me if it wasn't good. And, um, and it went really well. And then I just, I kept rolling out workshops. Well, we kind of hit, you know, into, and then there were day retreats, but we got into 2020 and of course, like everything, everything shifted. We did one retreat in 2020, but it, the fact is a lot of people fly in for my retreats, especially now at the level that we're doing them, they come in from all over. And if things are still uneasy for people to be flying or not knowing if we're any city's going to be in lockdown. We chose to not do too many last year at all. So this is um, with the weather breaking here in Texas. If you're watching and you're not in Texas, Central Texas is pretty um, abysmally it, hot. It, it toasty. It's 95 now as opposed to 105 is what she's saying. Yeah, and I was dancing outside going, it feels so good. Yeah, because that's cool to us, right? So yeah, the horses want nothing to do with people and people want nothing to do with being outside if it's 102 degrees in humidity. So um, we just now decided to launch into what we call our, our retreat season, which would be fall into winter. So we're scheduled from now until January and then starting back up again in May. In fact, I now have another location. So we're doing a mindfulness retreat in Colorado at the end of May, which should be beautiful. So the great thing is now we have actually upscaled. What we learned from, from 2020 was watching the trends in, in leadership, watching where the focus of corporations was going as far as their offsite training mm -hmm. and the importance of offsite connection with their team because many of them remained remote or partly remote. Mm -hmm. So yep. that sense of unity can be missing a lot of times. So they're looking for things and maybe they're a little bit tired of, no offense to anybody that has one, a little bit tired of like the ropes courses or golf outings. Um, so they're looking for something that's a little different and really helping people get out of the environment and into something that is real, like nature, getting out of their work environments and actually being able to forget about everything. And I'm amazed at, I think it's a positive thing that so many people had contacted me 
over 2020 because I kept going with the networking. Everything was virtual. I know you probably did the same thing. Yeah. And we kept conversations going. And I had a lot of people instantly say, what are you doing? Tell me about it. I want to bring my team. And so the good thing about that is that I think as Simon said, I, I just watched a, a talk that he did, you know, a video that he did recently saying there is nothing easy about soft skills. Mm -hmm. It is what's necessary for leadership right now. And if you're not used to using or accessing your compassioning, your real listening skills, your empathy, it's a different ballgame yeah. now. So uh, there is a real need for having not just the leaders, but the team members as well, learn how to work with each other mm -hmm. with those those soft skills and focus. And that's, that's really what a lot of this work does. So um, I'm excited to see that shift. Actually, I think it's good for everybody. Yeah. Well, you know, you mentioned, you know, listening. All right. I want to say with the pandemic and listening has been tough because everybody's wearing a mask. All right. Not been <laughs> political on this, but like, I, I watch your lips to understand what you're saying sometimes. I, cause I can't yes. always hear it. Yes. Listening has become a whole new game. And then you've got the people that yell all the time because they're wearing a thick mask, yeah. you know, and then when they're, I was at the, I was at uh, Whole Foods the other day and this sweet woman in front of me, she might've even been double masked. I don't know, but she's talking to the girl behind the counter. And I know that I'm standing right next to her and the poor little lady is yelling through her mask, you know, saying something. And then the woman goes, I'm the, the checker goes, I'm sorry. And she repeated it. And the checker kind of got it. And she goes, yeah, I can tell that the woman with the masks had said, that and I say mask meaning a heavy mask, right? Because there's some that are really hard to understand. Yeah. And she was yelling through the mask. She goes, sometimes have to yell, people don't understand. And then she went on to say something she thought was funny. I know that the woman behind the counter couldn't understand a single thing. <laughs> but God bless her, she laughed anyway. And I was like, Well, that's a very, you know, yeah. very am amicable way to handle that situation because it's, it's, it's not easy. You, know, you gotta re well, like my mom and I were discussing this, you know what I mean? And I'm sure you can really just go into business, but we're talking about like I see people at Starbucks and I'm like, well, I can't tell if they're smiling because they have a mask on. And my mom says, watch the eyes. Right. In business. All right. You know what I mean? Are, are we learning to read the signals now? Because, you know, COVID has taught us that we've got to read signals differently. What's, what's interesting is subconsciously, we've always looked at the eyes. Mm -hmm. That's actually the first thing that we do. Yeah. But um, I think it's more, it's more of an evolved part of our brain that if somebody smiles and we, we recognize that, but we honestly, we look at the eyes and if the eyes don't match what's going on down here, if you're smiling, but not smiling with your eyes, that immediately denotes mistrust. We should mistrust this person if that's what's going on because it's incongruent. And we actually put that out a lot if we're not in our authentic self, as I call it, yeah. which is kind of where I've always trained from, right? Even when I started training people on camera, I, I inadvertently just kind of did what worked for me. And that was finding out who the heck I was and then putting that stuff forward that was working. And uh, that's kind of how I work with people is I find what is the thing about them that is the easiest for them, the easiest way to communicate, where's the place that they feel the strongest. And it does a lot of things. It helps people understand that they are being real Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes a little courage, which is what Simon Sinek was saying, you know, that it's not it's not easy, the soft skills, but to be able to be vulnerable and to be able to actually show some of the the uh, insecurities, maybe yeah. you could say, especially as a leader. But there's something about that, that if if a leader says to me, you know, I'm not really sure about that. Let me look into it. I respect that so much more than having someone make something up. And we've all known someone that has done that. Yeah, we have. All right. But, you know, the flip I'm looking at this now is, you know, during the pandemic, so many of us are trying to, all right, want to, we want to, we want to seem like we're still the leader. So we try to make things up or we try to be professional. Yeah. But how many people do you think, in, well, in, in your experience through the pandemic, have kind of calmed their, their, calm their, their, their moods and their world around and realize I've got to be a little more accepting because the world's different as opposed to like the anger and frustrated. I want it now people. Yeah. You know, we had, can I share a quick story from the retreat ahead, actually without using a name? Okay. Well, I'm not going to use this woman's name. It was a female treat. So I'm, I'm going to say that yes, it was a she, but in the very beginning of these retreats, we now have a happy hour and an, and an orientation day and, you know, all kinds of fun stuff. We have musicians come in and wine 
of course, and, and food and everything. But in the very beginning, we sit down, we do introductions, as you would probably imagine with these ladies that have flown in from all over. They don't really know each other. So we kind of do this all breaking of the ice. Hey, why are you here? And that kind of thing. And one woman spoke up and I noticed that because I hone in on language, I work with people on messaging. So I literally pick up on words and mm -hmm. I found so many victim words. I don't think I need to explain that to the people that are yeah. watching. I kind of know what that is, but a lot of victim language. And yet she's, she had such a powerful way about her and her mission was to create social change and diversity and really stand behind that. And, um, stop so much of the injustice that she was that she was seeing around her but she what was happening i learned later is she was actually taking on all of this stuff mm. and through the course of the weekend we showed her that self-care isn't just you know spending time in your garden doing your manicure and pedicure it's actually helping that stuff that you're that you're trying to work on like if you're if you are involved and passionate about an issue with the world you have to let the stuff that comes to you that's so negative flow through Otherwise, yeah. it just goes like this. And and that was why she had that sense. And and the with the victimization, though, comes anger. Mm -hmm. And anger does not promote positive change. It creates more anger. And I think it was even Martin Luther King that had a statement like that, whereas, you know, love will create what we're seeking to create, mm -hmm. not anger. Anger will push people away. So even in the way she was speaking and I could see, gosh, she's so powerful. There's something about her that's really powerful, but it was a little off-putting. And by the time she actually came into the present, learned a few skills of self-regulation and self-awareness, which is what leaders, that's a challenge for leaders a lot of times. So much pressure, so much going on around them that to find that time to, to come back to self and kind of do this evaluation and regulation, figure out where you're coming from for real and, and work on those skills that we yeah. talked about. Right. Um, that's not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing to find that, that place, but we, we did that with this individual at least over the weekend and she left with her language being completely different. Now I'm having a call with all the ladies tomorrow and I'm going to actually point that out as a positive thing for her. Cause I don't think she even realized it. Mm -hmm. But those victim words were gone because the anger was gone and she was ready to go in and really make that positive change from a totally different place. I mean, it may sound a little woo, but she was coming from a place of love and passion as opposed to overwhelm and, and anger, you know, huge difference in how it's received. Huge. Um, now, uh, now during, during your workshops and stuff and during what you're doing with them at the retreat, are you, you're not doing like any preaching at them, but you're trying to get them to like, see what that is like. I mean, you wouldn't go up to this lady and go, Oh, by the way, you need to fix this. You would come out and no. try to, the, the actual idea of the retreat is to get her to realize, Oh crap. Uh, I could have stuck my foot in my mouth by saying that that way. I best, I better look. I, I don't even know if she, if she, if she got to that point, because the way you said it kind of makes it seem like she felt like she could have Long, gone back and gone, oh, I did something wrong. It wasn't necessarily that it was wrong. Mm -hmm. It just was not the most effective approach mm -hmm. to accomplish what she wants to accomplish in the world. Well, me, you know, yeah, me, her, I would have I would have right. beat myself up. Like an hour I later probably would have too. figured it out. I would have like beat myself up. Oh my God, yeah. I should have said it that way. I, uh, I would have too. I probably would have too. But um what's interesting is that when in my in these situations, these retreats, these leadership retreats, which, as I said, they're geared toward geared towards women. But now we're booking you know, men and women in groups together. And, and, and it's kind of morphing as we're speaking, actually. Um, but the interesting thing about these is I don't tell them they need to do anything. I never do. Mm. We set them and say, we're going to work on relationship and being present. And we set them this particular time with the number of people we had, we teamed we teamed the leaders with other leaders and let them choose who that was going to be, which was so interesting to see how that worked. And um, we let them choose who their partner was going to be. And then they teamed up. So the horse gives a ton of feedback and then their human partner actually gives them feedback as well. So between those two things, they start to realize that what's going to work is not floating around up here, being angry, being high energy, or not being connected, they have to actually connect to their human partner, connect to the equine partner. And those are two very different things which require humility. You can't talk your way out of it because the horse doesn't care. Mm 
<laughs> doesn't speak your language. So it requires humility. It requires being present, compassionate, listening with all senses. Cause you were saying, you know, with a mask, we have to watch other things. Yeah. So working with the horses, you we teach them how to be very astute of small physical changes. And so if you're a speaker, like I've got a speaker group coming in in a couple of months. I'm super excited about how this is going to relate and you know what their takeaways are going to be. Because as a speaker, you're looking at the room and you're reading all the little energy signals. You're reading body language. You're, you're, you read the room, right? And so when you're learning those skills and watching an, an, an animal that you don't really understand, mm -hmm. you're watching that much more intensely because a lot of these ladies or leaders, they want to get it right. You know, that whole, I'm going to get it right. I'm going to be, yeah. the, I'm going to be top of the class. So they're looking really hard. Imagine if we listened to that hard to the people that were on our teams. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it. I mean, every time I look at, like I walk into a new, a new scenario or new team, a new, whatever it is, I am looking to learn from that team to what 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 to listen for, what to be a part of. I remember going, I mean, uh, if you'd have seen me in my car wash business, nobody would be my friend. I was a jerk. I was mean. I was like, you know what I mean? I was a boss. I wasn't a leader. I was a boss. You were a bully and, boss? Were you a bully boss? Yes, I was because I wanted to get the work done. It's anti-bullying month, by the way. So it, yeah, yeah anti-bullying month. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, when I sold that business, I spent five years at Starbucks. Boy, did I learn some people skills that like I didn't have. Yeah. yeah. It's that the culture at Starbucks actually, especially in regards to that, is great. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's great. Well, I mean, I say this all the time. The biggest thing I learned at Starbucks is like a, an opening statement that someone said was, We're in the people business serving coffee. And yes. I've I've always carried little things like that, that that impact my mind. Was it changed my philosophy entirely when I went from being someone getting my coffee to being someone serving the coffee. And you know what I mean? I had to click that in my mind because every time I was coming up to get the coffee, I don't want to talk. Give me my coffee, man. I'm going to hurry. You know, that was my mindset. Yeah. Now I had to learn to read the customer to find out if that was their mindset. And if they wanted to, I just had to tell them, hey, have a nice day. Yeah. And their coffee. It was not my job to change them. Right. You know what I mean? And I had to learn that at Starbucks, but I had to learn, wow, uh, you know, that's because five, you know, I mean, I came to Starbucks for five years before I ever worked there and how they treated me when I was, yeah, just give me my coffee. I'm in a hurry. Made an impact to me when they said we're in the people business serving coffee. And so what a great lesson for leadership made you so, so much better leader to mm -hmm. be able to, to take on that role. And that's exact, those skills are just what I'm talking about. It's that it's that empathy. It's that listening. It's the be you know really ob observing and humility, right? Because there's a piece that's not humble when we're being the the bully boss. Yeah. Do this or don't do that. And I'm sure that I I was that at some point too. I mean, we all are on a journey. We all evolve. If I look back at how I handled situations when I was 20 and 21, it was awful. Especially like media, awful because I was terrified. That's right. I was I was absolutely terrified. Of everybody I've heard those and stories. Everything. Yeah, I've heard those stories, and they're on older shows. But yeah, you can always yeah. tell us again how terrified you were. No, 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 I was. I was a total basket case, and I had no idea who the hell I was or why anybody would want to hear from me. I just happened to be on popular TV shows, and so they'd bring me in and put me on interviews. And so, part of why I teach what I teach is to help people actually discover for themselves what's so amazing about them. You know that we're all designed with this, and with a capital D, designed with this greatness inside of us. We're born thinking that we're great, honestly. And it's our environment and our situations that kind of take us away from that belief. And, and we step into sometimes owning pieces of lies that were never ours to own in the first place. Very, so. very, very true. So, mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you built this entire program on leadership all around the, the equine, correct? Mostly around the equine. It fits very nicely with the, the branding and the coaching that I do. Mm -hmm. Because, like I said, I, I work with speakers, so this is kind of the same thing. If the speaker can come from a truly authentic place, instead of getting up, and I know I've, I've asked, we've talked about this before, how when you when you travel the circuits, you see people that'll hop up on a stage that have been trained by another speaker, and they talk and act and do everything just like the person that trained them. Do I act like Craig that much? No, you don't. <laughs> Not at all. But you know what I mean. Yeah. They get up with skills. 
but they're not their their light isn't shining. You know, yeah. the thing that that is so magnetic about that individual up on stage isn't there. Yeah. And so when you meet them off stage, then in you know, it's a totally different person. Yeah. So I think the way I've always worked is helping people come back to that place that feels the most natural. So working in the retreats. Now the retreats are the high end program that I offer, right? So it's kind of the piece to resistance. And so mm -hmm. by the time you get to that, then you're really working in a purely natural environment. It's pretty intense. I mean, for somebody that has never, you know, that, that has no sense of who they are or how to tap into that power, it might be, it, you know, it's a, it's a jump. It's a jump. Mm -hmm. it's, you have to be kind of brave to to really be humbled by a 1200 pound animal um but there's more to it than just the animal work too i mean we we do some some tool we give offer a lot of tools for regulation in the moment how to achieve a state of mind that you can access at any time even when you're in a meeting and something goes awry you know there's very subtle ways that you can actually bring yourself back to the present and calm state so that you can handle the situation well so we do give a lot of those kind of things too, which is very similar to mm -hmm. what I've been teaching for years for people that deal with stage fright. Yeah. So this is an interesting question that Robert brought up here. Uh, would you would would there be enough time for someone to form a friendship with one of the horses? Oh. You know, the that's a great question, Robert. And what's interesting about the horses is they don't really care who you are, who you were five seconds ago. They're gonna read you as you are right now. So if somebody can be in the present moment and understand what that so we work a lot on people approaching a horse that most of these people are not familiar with horses we even had a woman from haiti that was terrified of all animals so that was fun so to see this relationship when they're two sentient sentient beings that do not speak the same language at all um and to see them mutually form so we don't look at the horse as a tool which is what makes this possible robert mm -hmm the the horse is actually a partner they have their own mind they have their own opinions of where they want to be touched how they want to be approached and it's up to the human to figure out oh okay this horse doesn't like to be touched like that because they meet all the horses before they choose their partner oh, and wow. we ask them to tap into their intuition so it, bringing up the intuitive ability is actually something that leaders can can tap into with this so we actually have them specifically choose a, a partner that they're going to work with by doing that intuitive work and going up to each horse and, and finally finding the one that they're going to be working with. And yeah, we have, I can even have somebody feel like they have befriended a horse in about three hours, but the retreats that we're doing, you know, now, like the one I had last weekend, it's two and a half days actually. So uh, that's plenty of time. They're working with the same horse the whole time. But if you fall away from being present, mm -hmm. that horse will fall away as well. And then you have to get the relationship back because yeah. you ask a horse what time it is. It's now, you know, and it's a blessing and a curse. The good thing is that it teaches you to be present. If you want to stay connected to that animal, it also, and some of the horses, depending on the personality will remain connected. Even if you disconnect, it just depends. They're all different, just like human beings. So, but, oh yeah. yeah. I was I was say, do they have a memory to that? Like, Oh my God, you dissed me. I'm, 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 I'm not coming back to you. Let's put it like this. There's a there's a degree, obviously, of abuse that yeah. they don't forget, right? That we've I've taken in horses that have had some trauma in the in the past, and there will be triggers for that trauma, just like for human beings, there's triggers to trauma. And most of us have suffered some sort of trauma by the time we're an adult. Mm -hmm. Different varying degrees, but there will always be something that will trigger that. And it's the way we react to it. So the horse is the same, but if, yeah, if I do something, um, for instance, I had a, a gentleman come over the other day, he was working on the horse's feet and he, his partner came by well-meaning reached up and patted the horse on the face. Well, this horse does not like that mm. at all. So that would be like us walking up to a stranger and slapping them. That's kind of how this horse reacted. And wow. the gentleman backed up and goes, Oh, I'm like, yeah, he's really sensitive to that. You know, a second later, this guy can come up and, you know, kind of, approach with a totally different energy and that horse is not going to go yeah but you just did this okay yeah. the horse doesn't stay in story human beings stay in story yeah so that's the blessing of working with them is we change our energy they will change they will accept that as being real humans don't do that i know uh you know because i'm still holding the grudge from that kid from third grade so i know <laughs>
<laughs> Let's talk about bullying, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know I have I have a uh, 25 employees who are still holding a grudge against me from when I was the bully <laughs> employer. So yeah, <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> I, doubt I treated them very very well. I was not I was I was a get work done, but I was a very very good to my employees. I always believe in that. Anyway, good. Um, so I mean, some of the unique things about you know what I mean with the animals and stuff like you know what I mean. I I, I was never a, an animal person, right? Growing up, and uh, as you know, that you know the story of, of the cat situations at my house was the, um, the the when we moved to the condo, I took over my and watched my oldest stepson's cat, and he became my cat. Mm -hmm. All right, and yeah, when he passed away, it was so hard at the beginning of the pandemic when he passed away, um, because I thought he was going to be with us forever. You know what I mean? It's hard. That was the first time I've ever gotten attached to a cat and lost it. In my at, the, at the beginning of a pandemic too. Oh. I didn't know that actually. Well, no, actually that you it, was the beginning. it was about, it was the beginning of 2021. So it was sort of the middle of the whole thing really. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then I decided, well, you know what I mean? To, 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 to alleviate the suffering, I just went and grabbed two cats and adopted them. Yeah. That was a bad, that was a bad mistake. <laughs> you made it sound like it was so random. Like yeah. you just went out and grabbed two. <laughs> I just went and grabbed two. No, I grabbed two kittens that I learned to love and love very deeply. And it just didn't, it didn't work out. They did not, two kittens did not belong in a small condo. I learned that oh, the hard no. way. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. I had, I don't know if you heard, like, yeah, I had to totally rebuild my studio. They destroyed my, my computer system and everything. Yeah. <sighs> Oh, oh no, that's pretty serious. No, I didn't. Um, as in, yeah, as in, you know, the computer I'm on now is not the one I was on last year when I talked to you. Um, I have now spent several thousand dollars to replace it. Plus I had to replace lighting and all that stuff that they wrecked. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and it's hard because the day I took them, I, they found they're in another home, they're in a bigger home and it's much better for them, but it was so hard to let go of them because my heart was attached to them, but I knew the right thing to do for them yeah was to put them in stuff and that being said about animals i mean i grew up on farms all right i've never though been around horses until i can't like come to your place i come and i see the horses but i grew up around cows and pigs and chickens it was yeah. totally different for me uh you know what i mean and yeah uh, i had a cow that was a mean cow but we had a bull growing, growing up that everybody was scared of the bull but i'd walk right up to him grab the horn come on george back in the pen you know george it was name was george yeah <laughs> I love animals with total human names. I think it's great. <laughs> George. It's like uh, we had a friend, we had a friend who had a, a little dog named Steve. Like somehow I thought that was so funny. I'm like, that's the cutest freaking name for a little dog. So yeah. So yeah. Anyway, no, I called my cats. My last two cats was Fred and Fiona. He looked like a Fred. I'm just saying he acted like a Fred. And she was Fiona out and out. If you the, the ruckus part of it. If you've ever seen the TV show, uh, you know what I mean, that was on Showtime. And the girl Fiona was on to it. Um, God. Oh, William H. Macy was on it as well. I can't think of who it was, but anyway. Uh, That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. And she was the girl Fiona and she would go, she would go batshit crazy every now and then. I'm like, that was this cat. That's why I named That her was Fiona. it. Just every once in a while. I have to, I have to leave the room, get up and elevate and tear out of the room. I don't know yes. how they do that. Yeah. yeah. But there was something about the pandemic actually that was interesting because it shifted, I think, a lot of people's focus around their work. Mm -hmm. Whether they were working for a bully leader employer or they were just feeling underappreciated or they felt that they were doing the wrong thing for their design. I think there are so many people that have, unfortunately, of course, lost their job and found themselves searching for something, but not just settling. Mm -hmm. I think they were searching for something that was better for them. Yes that fit their passions and their skills and their strengths better than wherever it was that they were. And then there were those that voluntarily left their job or didn't return when they were asked to return. And, and um, I think that is in part, part of what is feeding the need for this authentic part of leadership, this authentic leadership that we're looking for these days, because that inauthentic, that sense of being sold. I mean, I've known you for nine years. So, Nine years ago, when you went to a speaker event, there were multiple speakers up on the stage. They were all selling. Yeah, remember? Yep. I felt it was. I fell into this, and there was all, there was that language that they all tended to use, and then they all moved online, and it was the same language online, right? And and we kind of got used to that script, and we could see straight through it. Yeah. 
And with the pandemic, we've got people whose cats are jumping up on their desktops, right? Whose dogs are barking, whose kids are coming in in their diapers. And, and it's just so, you're so real. I mean, we had no choice but to be vulnerable, at least in the beginning, when nobody had the studio set up necessarily. We were just shooting from our kitchen tables and, you know, trying to make these meetings and all of these things. And it was a totally different situation. Like, remember the first time I saw an award show, I think it was the CMAs. They mm -hmm. did everybody that was winning was piping in from home or the performers that were playing were playing. So Miranda Lambert sitting on her front porch, strumming her guitar acoustically. Yeah. And I thought that was such a treat yeah. because it was so much more real than what we were used to seeing, this big blasted thing up on a stage with, you know, everything sort of manipulated. There was none of that. So I think that there's a lot of us that have now gotten used to the real yeah i, I yeah. remember like i remember like well, I, I used to watch the cnbc business channel and i remember the one guy doing it with the picture of his his fireplace behind him and the tv's on the fireplace and his son walks by in his pajamas <laughs> <laughs> and, he goes, yeah. and there's my son john <laughs> <laughs> now back to the stock report yeah um <laughs> Most unique stock report I've ever watched. There are so many of those. If you just, you know, go onto YouTube and do a search for those things, there's so many. Yeah. And I'm sure I've had a few of those things too. I mean, I remember even watching, this has happened to me. That's why I remembered watching it. It was um, Entertainment Tonight, the blonde girl. I can't remember her name, real thin. Anyway, she was she was doing something. It might have even been a special special thing she was doing on like Good Morning America or whatever. And so she's got this up, you know, and they're talking about how amazing her set looks. And she goes, oh, yeah, well, I'm doing this. And I'm doing that. And then her dog comes and runs like through the wires that you're talking about, knocks over the lights, the camera, knocks over everything. And all you see is this total chaos. And she's yelling the dog's name. <laughs> this is live on a morning show. Mm -hmm. So the great thing was she kind of put everything back together again and everybody was laughing about it because we've all, it's happened to me. It's happened to you. I'm sure it's happened to you. It's, yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's life. That's kind of how things are. So I think that whole idea, I sometimes say authenticity activates people much more now than the verbiage of that salesy stuff that we used to get. Hey, you know, I'm going to reward the people that take action now, you know, those kind of things, yeah. you know. I think there's so much of that that we I look at as being so like a lifetime ago. So my mom has a horse question I have to ask you. Yes. My mom and I were talking about this the other day and she just texted me to remind me. Apparently she's watching. Hi, mom. Um, Hi, mom. She 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 said, do you remember the movie with it was a, a, an about the Amish movie with Tim Allen and Kirstie Alley where they were like hiding in Amish territory in like Pennsylvania? And he had to train, or he was supposed to be the great trainer of this horse, Big John. I don't remember what kind of horse was Big John. <laughs> Probably some sort of draft horse. I don't then remember. Supposedly it, was, supposedly it was bigger than than a uh, Clydesdale, but it's not a Clydesdale. I thought they said it was a Belgian something or other. Could be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's some really big horses. There's some really big horses. You think you a Clydesdale know what, is big. what the horse was anyway. Yeah. I don't. I don't, I mean, have you even seen the movie? Or do you, I mean, the movie was 30 some years ago now. So, yeah. I know, but now I'm curious because you said Tim Allen, right? Yes. So, okay. I Come think on, he's is, hysterical. Would this guy here ever miss a Tim Allen movie? Come on. No, I, I think Tim Allen's hysterical. I think he's, Love he's, Tim Allen. he's awesome. Yeah. So I'll have to look that up and see. But I have stood next to horses that were taller than Clydesdales. Mm -hmm. I, the tallest one I stood next to, there were several of them at a parade. And I think there were 20 hands high. So my, my horses are kind of average at 15 mm -hmm. hands. So five more hands would be like literally that much taller than the horses wow. that are, that I have in my barn. Yeah. And I've got one horse now who's, you know, he can stand behind me and just take his head over my head. He's wow. that tall. He can just kind of go like this and yeah. But he doesn't so. ever come up and just, you know, put his hand, his head on your head like that. He, no, I, I, he's the one that doesn't like to be touched around the face. Oh, but if okay. you if you if you uh, befriend him, Robert, you can do that quickly. If you befriend him, then it's okay. Like you you can do it. So the closest he's come, I do have a white horse that does that. You mm -hmm. know the white horse. Mm -hmm. He'll come up and lay his head on your shoulder and anywhere on your body that you'll let him. Actually, 
Uh-huh. He's he's like a large Labrador retriever, but yeah, yeah. very large. Uh, you know, and it's always it's so interesting asking you horse questions because I really I don't know anything about horses. Uh, I've not been on a horse in 35, 40 years to even ride one. So um, yeah. yeah, I just uh, the only time I see and get close to horses is when I come to your place. So it's time for you to come on back, <laughs> mom, mom back. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's been fun having you on the show again today. All right. And, hey. and just getting to see what else you were up to. Um, any any uh, words of wisdom you want to give to our people before I go into playing the game with you? Uh oh, I'm a little nervous about the game. I think you uh, changed no. up a few things. I changed, changed up a few game. things. Uh oh. Yeah. Gosh, you know, um, well, obviously, I'm always reachable. My name.com is my, is my website. You can always reach me through that or any social media. Like uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, I'm on a lot. Instagram, mm-hmm. um, not on Twitter so much, but um, I am still listed there. I still have a. a you know, a thing you know what? Tw- yeah, you know what Twitter's good for? What? To check to see if Facebook's down. <laughs> That's the only reason I keep it, actually. Yeah. <laughs> That's really funny. Oh, like, yeah, what's really? going on with Facebook and Instagram? Let's go to Twitter. That's what it's like the third in the row of, well, no, of where to know, go like, for your information. When it was down the other day, that's what everybody, you went and watched. Yeah. I was like, you know, so we're here to find out why Facebook's down. Yes. <laughs> it was funny, actually, you know, to see people panic like that. No, I, I think if you're feeling a sense of, of overwhelm, the one thing I can say that, that we practice a lot um, at the retreats, of course, is if you're feeling a sense of overwhelm, if you if you're feeling foggy because of that overwhelm and you're having a hard time concentrating, I know what that feels like. The hardest thing to do is to change your environment sometimes because you, I'm very tenacious. So I will sit down and go, I'm going to get this task done. And then I'll just keep going slower and slower because I'm in this wrong state of mind. So literally get up, change your environment, go outside, um, sit down, go for a walk, sit down in the grass, go for a walk, take your shoes off. We did an exercise like this. Take your shoes off, put your feet in the grass and just change your state and then come back in. It does wonders. Even like a five minute break like that will be able to allow you to finish a task that would have taken you three times as long if you didn't take the break. So for me, it's not taking my shoes off because I haven't worn shoes since the pandemic started. I wear flip flops <laughs> everywhere. Yes. Uh, the problem is I wear black socks with them. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I, you and Bon Jovi. You and yeah. Bon Jovi. Totally fine. Yeah. Uh, well, no, I have these, uh, those, those copper flex type what i don't know what that stuff's called that, that really um in copper infusion type socks that i wear yeah. to keep my you know keeps for circulation so like i still wear them because they like boy they man they've they've kept me in better shape with all this stuff but like i still just can't get into getting in the car and putting shoes on before i go uh unless i'm going for a dress event i've got my flip-flops 90 percent of the time and i get in the car and i kick the shoes off and i drive barefoot i think you should just wear the flip-flops with your dressy clothes well, I, you know that like the first time I speak, hopefully it looks like it's going to be like my event on November 5th and 6th. But the first time I speak, I'm going to walk out with barefoot. my shirt on, better barefoot with my pajama bottoms on and go, oh, we're not on that Zoom thing? <laughs> I thought this was a Zoom thing. Oh, anyway. That's I got to have fun. Yeah, that's what I've been planning it for ages. So apparently it's going to happen at my event because it's not anybody else isn't having an event. I was going to do it at Craig's which was supposed to be today, tomorrow, and Saturday. Oh, no. Yeah. I oh, know. So, anyway, so before you go. Yes. We've got a game, and here's how the new game plays. I have five envelopes, and each one of these envelopes is three questions. Okay. You get to pick three envelopes. One, two, three, four, or five. And they're not in order because I – anyway. Okay, so I'm going to pick two, four, and five. Four. And five. These ones here, we're not asking you these questions. I love it because you can now, I've now mixed, you know, the the, the boy questions and the girl questions together. So okay. it's very interesting to ask a boy a girl question. First one, question being, first question being, movies, do you like to watch them at home or in the theater? Theater. Both, theater. both but there's something about the experience of going to the theater. That is, I, I, takes me I, away, War. I know. Yeah. Top Gun. I'm waiting for Top Gun to come out. I'm going to see Top Gun in a theater if they ever release it. <laughs> New Top Gun. If they ever, they've been teasing us since 2018. So, wow. Wow. Yeah. Yes. It's been that long. They showed the, they showed the preview of the movie uh, at Conan 
And, you know, when Conan was on the air. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Like, when Conan was on the air, he's not anymore. All right. Yeah. He, his show's not on. But, yeah, in 2008, 19, like early 2019, to be released in early 2020, and it is still not released. Yeah. So, wow. question okay. number two in this one here is, would you rather have the hamburger or taco to eat? Hmm. I don't eat a lot of red meat, but when I do get a craving for red meat, it's a hamburger. Okay. Yeah. You know, you know, vegan tacos are like those shrimp tacos are really awesome. I don't know if you had them. Actually, the impossible burgers are like really good. Yeah. Those are yeah, I do. I hear they yeah. taste we good. Make those at like, home. Yeah. I, I I hear they taste good, but I haven't tried them yet. They do so. taste really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Question number three, this will be interesting to see if you even have an opinion on this one, but who was the better basketball player, Michael Jordan or LeBron James? Um, yeah, I'm not really qualified to answer that, but just on personality alone, I'm going to say Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love, and I phrased it, who was, because LeBron James is still playing. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. <laughs> Next one, anyway. Not to, not to show favoritism over which one I want. <laughs> oh, goody, goody. These are the short ones. All right. And this okay. one here, the first one here is boxers or briefs. Briefs. Do you hear my, can you hear my dog moaning in the background as you ask that question? No. I'm kind of glad because it was very funny. She sounded like a man groaning, literally. I just wanted to say that was my dog and not my husband when you <laughs> asked that question. The Tim, the Tim Allen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah i would say um briefs okay briefs for sure coke coke or pepsi <clears throat> oh neither um coke if i had to okay yeah all right you're going on a trip would you rather go to ho stay in a hotel or camping camping you would, <laughs> you would be a camping girl yeah I, yeah, Tim, I'll Tim's go like, camping. Yeah, I don't all right, that. all right it's got to be like the fifth wheel you know camp yeah slide out that's camping to me well, I have that now. So, of course, that was my first reaction. But I I, I like camping, all types of camping. Yeah. Gwen would rather stay in the tent. So, yeah. 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 Anyway. Last one. Last series of three. Oh, good. We got a female question in here. Podcast or music in the car? Oh, more often now podcast, actually. Does that make me old? I, no, believe it or not, I'm finding a lot more people when I'm asking these questions are starting to go, you know, I don't listen to podcasts in the car or the music anymore. And yeah. like local radio, like I can't, I, like, I can't tell you the last time I listened to local radio in my car anymore. I have satellite radio, which I yeah. still, I tune into that very little because one of the things I have is like music or apps or podcast. Yeah. Um, I have a music app for the radio station that I grew up listening to in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Oh, that's awesome. And I still <laughs> listen to that station on an app in my car. Anyway. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So uh, next one here, high heels or boots? Hmm. High heeled boots. <laughs> um, more often than not, I am in boots, but I really like a nice heel. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the last question is, when you do go to the movies, Yes. Do you get popcorn or candy? Mm, candy. Candy? Which candy? I got to know. I got to know. Come on. Raisinets. Raisinets. In my Snow mind, cap. it's a fruit. I know. Snow, snow, <laughs> snow caps are my favorite. But raisinets uh -huh. and snow caps. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And back when I did used to eat the popcorn, you put the raisinets in the popcorn. And yeah, gets a little messy, but. I just go back to thinking the red rope licorice and, uh, you know, Wayne's world too. There is a stream of red rope licorice and going through the crowd. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't want to say that. Uh, yeah. I have like different movies I've been attached to throughout the years. And that's one of them. Anyway. It's all good. Did, wait a minute. Did you, know, did, did you watch the movie Bohemian Rhapsody? Yes. With Mike Myers into it. Did you catch the line where Mike Myers, the, the, the record producer in that yeah. movie says, Bohemian Rhapsody. No one will ever drive in their car and bang their head to that song. No, he did. Really? He said that. Yes, he said that, and it's like it's so ironic because, like, you know, that's what made, that brought the song's popularity back was him playing, doing that. Oh my gosh, that is absolutely brilliant. No, I totally missed that. 
I told a missed moment in a in a feature film that was like so awesome. I love no. those ones, like stuff like that in the movies where you got to catch it because you got to know the earlier movie where yes. it came from, you know? Um, yes. Yeah, and it, it connected so many ways. Uh, oh, that's always, so cool. Yeah, always been a fan of funny things like that. But anyway, well, one one more time, tell everybody the website and uh, how they can get a hold of you and, and what, yeah. what you're doing over there right now. Yep, yep. Sandra D. Robinson.com, just like it is on the screen right here if you see it, but it's D E E spelled out if you are only listening. Sandra D. Robinson. And um, yeah, on the site, you can you can reach me through the site through social media like Facebook, um, LinkedIn, Instagram. And uh, we are, I am still loving working with people and helping them get their message out. So we do personal branding and messaging, everything from getting in front of the media doing podcasts even like this people are not always comfortable when they have to go on camera so no. i i help people a lot when they're getting ready for those kind of things and if they have to keynote especially if they've never keynoted anything before it's a scary it's a scary jump for some people so i help with that the equine retreats all that information is on my website too under services so cool. yeah cool. there you go well i thank you for coming in and being my guest again today sharing a little bit more about your life with me Thanks. Yeah, that was fun. Can't wait yeah. to have you back down here. <laughs> yeah, yeah I guess I got to come back to your house now and visit again. <laughs> you do. Your very own special wine and equine down yeah. here. <laughs> My own special wine and equine retreat. Yeah. Uh, anyway, to you guys, the listeners, I want to thank you guys for tuning in today. Uh, do me a favor. Go check out my friend Sandra D. Robinson. Go to sandradrobinson.com. All right. And, uh, you know, be, be sure to stay tuned to our show because we're going to be doing some other interesting people we've got coming up talking about what they did and how they changed things during the pandemic. I'm Tim Gillette. I'll be back next week with another show. Have a great week, guys. Bye.